Hello, and thanks for joining today's webinar from Real Story Group. My name is Scott Dill. I'm on the business development team, and we're really excited for today's presentation. It's about our latest research offering on omni-channel content platforms. Our founder, Tony Byrne, is going to be diving into what we exactly mean by that term uh, for the heart of today's presentation. But I'm just going to get you started with a couple quick uh, housekeeping items of note. Uh, first, I see that we have a question already about will we be getting a recording for this session? And yes, a recording will be available on our website uh, over the next few days uh, of this presentation. You'll also be able to access the slides as well. Also, uh, we will have time at the end for questions. So if you do have any questions or feedback that you'd like to share, uh, please enter those into the questions tab and go to webinar control panel, and we will get to those uh, at the end of today's session. As we get started, I just want to uh, share a little bit more uh, information about uh, Real Story Group and, and the research we produce. You'll see here, this is our uh, famous or perhaps infamous um, omni-channel stack vendor map. And we have this built so you can see exactly the areas we cover in the research and the vendors uh, that are included within each of those different uh, coverage areas. You'll notice that we uh, take a look at uh, several different areas when it comes to the omni-channel stack. And today we're gonna look at the red line on this map, which is omni-channel content platforms. There is, of course, some overlap uh, in the vendors and some of the different spaces we cover. And uh, Tony will talk about that as part of today's presentation. So um, after today's session, you're welcome to download excerpts from our research in any of these areas. And uh, we certainly welcome the opportunity to have any conversations with you if you have questions about, uh, about the vendors or any of the areas we cover. So with that, I'm gonna turn things over to Tony and again, Thank you for taking some time to join us for today's presentation. Tony? Great. Thanks, Scott. I uh, wanted to just tell you a little bit about Real Store Group because I founded the company about 18 years ago, really based on this quadrant you see on the left. I was working for a systems integration firm. We were implementing some tools that nominally were in the top right winner's quadrant, uh, but we were having real problems implementing some of these solutions. And I thought that you know there ought to be a better way to tell the real story about what tools work under which circumstances. And so I found that originally CMS Watch, now Real Story Group. And the initial decision we made was to be completely independent. And to do that, we decided fairly uniquely in the analyst world that we would only work on the buy side of the equation, which means we only advise enterprise customers like you. We never advise or consult with vendors or even get a cup of coffee for them. And so our research then quite properly over the years has been regarded as the, the toughest and, and most critical vendor evaluation research that you can find out there. And I think that carries through even to our latest research marketplace that we're looking at here today. But over time, we've also sort of evolved our offerings and we now uh, advise stack owners as well on their broader choices. So this is who we call Stacy, the MarTech and CX stack owner. She gets a lot of questions about a lot of different topics over the course of her day and our mission in life is to provide a kind of an advisory shield around Stacy so that she can get all those questions answered and think about more important things like what she's going to have for lunch that day. And now let's talk about the subject at hand which is really omni-channel content platforms and this is really interesting because this is the first time where we've sort of defined a marketplace. Typically in our past, we always committed to just sort of waiting for a marketplace to sort of emerge and see if someone else puts a label on it and then follow that label. But there's so many interesting things happening as we evolve into an omni-channel world. And this is really part of a bigger story that we call the omni-channel context. So I think many of you are experiencing this now where your customer experiences are isolated, disjointed, and inconsistent. There's a number of reasons for that. Obviously, we all have uh, a, a dozen or more different engagement silos by which we're talking to customers and prospects. And the fundamental problem with this siloed approach is that each one of these engagement silos typically has its own kind of content caboose, data, rules, planning, analytics, all within that silo. And so we're trying really desperately to do this kind of lateral integration and it's just not working. It's becoming too complicated. And as a result, our customers are having 
quite widely varying and disconnected experience is trying to interact with us across these channels. And so a more services oriented approach in the future would say, all right, let's take some foundation services here and do them enterprise wide and then feed those services into different, you know, contextual engagement environments for a more integrated customer experience. So one of the things that obviously is important is omni-channel operations here in green, unified customer data, nominally through some sort of a CDP or customer data platform. And you can see our research on that. CDPs often travel with some notion of wanting journey orchestration. And so we've published research on the major journey orchestration vendors and their pros and cons. But then having done this, if you want to have kind of a consistent story across these channels, consistent branding, consistent messaging, but still some contextual engagement, then increasingly what we see our customers asking for is something that we call an omni-channel content platform. This is a single source of the truth for reusable assets that you can feed into n number of different channels. And so this was you know, a year or two ago, kind of an aspiration. Now it's become really something of a reality in terms of kind of an emerging marketplace here. So it's part of a broader sort of stack here. So this is more of a technology view of it where, you know, you have these engagement channels, interaction delivery services. Again, you still have content and engagement management services, but they're not going to be um, as uh, as smart or as rich maybe as they used to be because we're going to move some of that smartness and some of that richness some of that intelligence down into this enterprise foundation services that you see down here, including omni-channel content platform. And so what that means is that you still will be doing channel-specific contextualization, assembly, and delivery and interaction, but enterprise-wide, you're gonna have core data, core content, insights, and so forth. And so that's it's this core content that we're gonna talk about today because it's somewhat of a novel concept in this space. So what does an omni-channel content platform or OCP do? Okay, so the idea here is that it's kind of a content object store for base reusable themes and assets. So this could be a wide variety of different types of, of content and assets. So text and copy snippets, uh, maybe you know HTML micro formats. You've got offers, certainly images, video, audio, but also documents. Um, micro experiences, and then ideally some tracking services where you can see how these things are being assembled into compound assets and really do some where use tracking. So this becomes a kind of a, uh, a, a content store, not for all of your content, but just for the content that, you're, that are sort of base reusable assets that you need to be able to propagate across multiple channels. So this then implies some really key capabilities. First, an, an OCP has to be object-oriented, so that's kind of a technical concept, but an important one that supports compound asset management with parent-child sibling relationships and also supplies supports highly extensible information modeling. So you have to be able to have multiple first-class assets in your system and not just, for example, in a digital asset management system, sometimes the image asset or the video asset is the only first class object and everything else is dependent on that. Having said that though, you absolutely need advanced asset and media management. We're all telling stories more visually, but text and HTML also have to be first class objects. You want to use, be, have, be able to support where you use tracking services so you can see where this content and the derivatives have been deployed. And you're going to need really tight integration with enterprise data services, including analytics and MDM. Ideally, some sort of connector framework. So that's something you don't always see in a content management platform. So you can deliver to digital, print, and other assembly services. It's got to be a richly shoppable store. So if I'm like the social media manager trying to get the latest campaign graphics, and to be sure, I may modify them for Twitter or Facebook, but I want to get those base assets, I need to be able to shop that store. This means that you needed really advanced, super advanced permission models that you don't often see in content and asset management systems. You get a lot of different people touching these systems and you have to track, you know, who's really responsible or who has rights to do what. Um, ideally, being able to support multiple taxonomies for different purposes, different channels, different business lines. And then AI machine learning, potentially interesting here as everywhere else, but ideally pluggable so that I'm not limited to what my vendor supplies. So, those are some kind of key functional capabilities. You don't see all of these in every OCP, but it's certainly, I think, a collection of services that we ought to all be sort of driving towards. So 
There's also this notion of component asset management here. So there's some core content support of base elements. It could be email components, mobile promos, social elements, other kinds of micro content, micro experiences, certainly media assets. So here's an example of an OCP where I'm managing um, email component. I'm managing an email campaign, but I'm doing it on a, on, a, on a componentized way. So I've got these different blurbs and these different assets that I'm assembling into an email, and I'm using kind of the enterprise foundation for this before distributing this content off to my ESP or my marketing automation platform for the actual delivery. So what's interesting about this is I'm no longer relying on the content management and asset management that's in my ESP or my map. Those content management services are likely to be very bad, as you know. And instead, having a more base enterprise store where I've got these assets, and I might be pushing some of these same assets to my CRM, to mobile delivery, to Alexa, what have you. So what we're talking there really is, is to some extent around compound asset management. So these are some of the business use cases that an OCP platform should support doesn't mean that it actually does all of this stuff itself. For example, it may not do sales collateral management. You may already have something like Seismic or some other platform where you're doing that. But the idea is it supports the content management behind this. So certainly marketing asset management, huge. Potentially advertising asset management, sales collateral. Service and support information management. So that leaks over a little bit into knowledge bases. Likewise with learning asset management potentially customer communications management, certainly product information management, because product information is not just assets, but all kinds of other uh, content and data about the products. You may still have a separate PIM, but the OCP is where you store all the core image uh, uh, and, and other content attributes that you then feed into the PIM. And then ideally, some two really core services, content as a service and micro experience syndication. Um, as a service as well. Those are two different things. Content is, of course, just a stream of, of information available through an API. Uh, that could be assets, could be text. Micro experience syndication is more like a widget that you can drop into other environments. So I'm not just syndicating content, I'm syndicating a particular component or a micro experience, being able to deploy that across multiple different environments. Those are some of the business use cases. And if you're familiar with Real Story Group, you know that we use these business use cases to evaluate the vendors. So yeah, we look at the features and some of the strengths and weaknesses, certainly the background, a lot of the vendor intangibles come into play, but we, what we really try to do is figure out the use case fit um, against these business use cases and line up the vendors accordingly. I mentioned that you really wanna think about object-oriented in this context, so this is just a little primer on um, what this means. It means that you should be able to do derivation, which means I may have a core video asset, but I'm going to deploy it differently on Alexa. Or I'm sorry, differently on Twitter, maybe a little bit differently on Facebook, maybe somewhat differently in an advertising environment. But then this notion of inheritance that I may be able to then potentially change that core asset and have all those changes then get inherited across all the different streams where it's being reused. Um, and also encapsulation and compounding, being able to combine things into larger objects and then manage them that way. This is a big dividing line in some of the existing content management markets that you might know, like digital asset management and web content management, is that there are some systems that are object-oriented and others that are not. And in the context of DAM or WCM, it may not be that big of a deal because um, being object-oriented certainly adds a lot of complexity. So you don't always want an object-oriented DAM or an object-oriented WCM, but for an omni-channel content platform, I can almost guarantee you, you do want it to be object-oriented. I'll talk about the marketplace. We're about halfway through, so I'm going to remind you that you can feel free to ask any kind of questions um, in the GoToWebinar control panel where you see the questions tab, or um, if you have anything you disagree with or something you want to just comment on, feel free to do that and we'll be sure to get to it. Okay. So the OCP marketplace this is really interesting to us because our subscribers are coming to us with omni-channel content management use cases and we were trying to map them against what some of these traditional tools would do and really found them coming up short. So what we have here in this chart is along the top, the different technology types, digital asset management, web content management, content marketing platform, product information management, and component or XML content management. 
And then we have these different content support, micro narrative, micro experience, documents, audiovisual images, data asset management, compound asset management. And then we look at these, you know, a dam might get you kind of close. And some of these OCTs definitely come out of the dam space. So we see it's particularly good at image and audio video. Historically, the problem with dams is that they're not very good at micro experience and micro narrative management, not always good at data asset management. And so they limit the sorts of content that they're going to support. Web content management systems often have the opposite problem. They can support some micro narrative, potentially micro experience management, but historically not very good at asset management. Um, and asset management obviously really critical to omnichannel. Then we have the same issue with content management platforms, or I'm sorry, content marketing platforms or CMPs. Historically, people use these to do a lot of micro narrative management, but fairly weak at the other stuff. Likewise, product information management systems, pretty good at document management and, and brochures and collateral and things around that, not always so good at some of the other things. And then component or XML content management, usually for fairly strict reuse as opposed to derivation. Um, so you can have some micro narrative management, but um, but uh, historically uh, not very strong there. So um, so then we look at omni-channel content platforms, and they're designed to solve to support all these sorts of different kinds of types of platform. We only give them three quarters of Harvey Ball because it's really important to note that this is a, still a somewhat immature marketplace, and um, the uh, not all of the OCP vendors actually support all of this stuff, nor do they support it necessarily very well. And so when I say this is what an omni-channel pl content platform is nominally supposed to do over here in the last column, that doesn't mean that they all do it. In fact, there's no vendor that we would give all of these scores to yet. So it's early days for this marketplace, and that's going to be kind of a constant theme of this half hour. So let's look at the marketplace. Right now, not a particularly large marketplace, but I guarantee you it's going to get larger over the next couple of years. Um, you have SendShare, which has been targeting this use case for some time. Um, Nuxio, which was a historically an ECM vendor, so it's got some interesting uh, angles to this, then kind of converted a little bit to being more of a dam vendor. It's an open source platform. Adobe, of course, active in this space. The big problem with Adobe is that it's striped across two different systems. You have their WCM and their DAM which although related are still two separate platforms, have different kinds of permissioning. It's not a single OCP. And I think that's the biggest problem with Adobe right now. Style Labs acquired by Sitecore, now the Sitecore uh, Content Hub, I believe, um, also targeted this use case explicitly. Core Media has been knocking on this door for the past several years and I think has, has finally walked into this space. Oracle has a content hub, not so much some, some older technologies that they've kind of put in some new cloud wine bottles, um, you should be appropriately suspicious of that, but still Oracle targeting this. As did IBM, which is over here on the right, they sold off their IBM, what was Watson Content Hub, to Acoustic, now it's just Acoustic Content, uh, originally started out as a dam and then a headless WCM, um, and so kind of a hybrid headless WCM and dam offering, that's the Acoustic, and then you know, Contentful, a headless WCM, Picture Park, 10 of us, uh, dam vendors that have rebuilt their platforms to target this. Marcom Central, this was kind of a content marketing and marketing asset management platform now targeting this use case. So you've got some a wide choice of fairly complex, I would say, development platforms and then some fairly specialized products. Um, again, none of these are as advanced or as fully functional as we might wish them to be on your behalf, but this is the marketplace that's emerging. And we know that some of you have some needs around this that are quite urgent that you really want to be looking at this seriously and that's why we've come up with these evaluations. So let's wrap this up and I see we've gotten some questions and certainly welcome some more here as we go forward. So three key takeaways. I'm fairly certain that we are all going to need some sort of OCT in the future. Uh, it's just that the market may not be ready for us right now and a lot of it depends on you know, your tolerance for getting something that's a little bit newer or that is kind of on its way into this space. Um, we have seen, you know, some good results with some of these depending on the scope of what you're trying to do. So you want a meteor investment according to your urgency. We do know that there's some really important use cases around email personalization, dynamic marketing and sales materials, um, just-in-time appropriate content to call centers. I mean, there's a lot of 
really interesting use cases around this, and some of those may be more pressing to you, um, in which case then it's worth exploring uh, whether there's a potential match here. The one thing that I would caution you against is don't default to your incumbent web content management or digital asset management platform as a long-term OCP solution. So uh, many of these vendors, if not all of them, will declare that they can support omni-channel content uh, management and delivery. Uh, the reality is, again, these are some fairly advanced capabilities that are required around component asset management, around object orientation, around connectors, around tracking, around compound asset management. These are not simple concepts. And so, um, you know, you could start experimenting certainly with your incumbent platform, but the reality is that if this becomes really important for you, you may need to look at this as another segment in your stack. So happy to share that um, we've got, we've been doing this for 18 years, excited today to be releasing the latest. You can download a sample at realstorygroup.com slash try and just tick the box for omni-channel content platforms. It's a sample evaluation of the vendor SendShare. So you can see what we have to say about SendShare and then decide whether the rest of this information would be useful for you. Um, there's various ways to engage with us going forward. One is we have a vendor selection advisory, so this would be access to all of our OCP research and all the decision support tools. Then you can call us on the phone and we help you, we inform and empower your tech selection teams with critical research and obviously candid advice. For those of you managing an entire stack, we have a kind of a separate offering around what we call the omni-channel stack advisory where you get access to all of our research and all of the colored boxes here. And our role there is to really advise you on strategic decisions and technology choices. Um, and we've been fortunate that we've had some dozens of large enterprises around the world participate in that. And we've gotten together the leaders of many of those stacks together into an executive leadership council around omni-channel stacks at our first meeting in Boston uh, a couple months ago. I'm gonna be meeting again in February, really excited about this peer support council. Some really interesting things coming out of that. So feel free to check in with us if you're interested in that. So uh, Scott, I'll turn it over to you here to just kind of wrap things up while I review some of the questions and comments that have come in. And once again, if you have anything to ask, um, feel free to just pop in there. Excellent, thanks, Tony. And uh, certainly as Tony mentioned, we encourage you to download samples from the research at any time. Um, you can look at this OCP evaluation along with um, any of the other areas that we cover as part of our research. Uh, we also have interactive tools that you can try, um, such as Real Quadrant to generate a custom shortlist in real time to compare the vendors side by side. We're happy to show you a behind the scenes tour of the subscriber experience. Um, so if you are uh, on a fence about uh, potentially subscribing, reach out to us at explorerealstorygroup.com and we can show you exactly uh, what will be available to you as subscribers and can walk you through the different subscription options that we have available. Um, we do have a few questions that popped in. Tony, I'm gonna turn things back over to you to, to get to those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so first is uh, Bob Boyko has checked in from the University of Washington, where he teaches, been teaching for more than a decade, classes in information management, content management. Bob wrote the content management Bible nearly two decades ago, where a lot of these original concepts were laid out. Um, and so we all owe a debt of gratitude to Bob for really talking up some of these basic information management concepts, which only now are kind of coming to fruition at some level because we're finally figuring out that we have to get this house in order if we are gonna be able to respond to customers who are coming at us at one minute from Alexa and another minute um, through a chat bot and another minute by responding to an email and how can we go coherent around that? It really requires some base component management to get there and I think the technology is finally catching up with us. Um, so great to see you, Bob. Steve's got a, a really good question um, about Adobe and the comment that I made that it was split across two products, he's arguing, well, this is still Adobe Experience Manager, AEM, is there another Adobe product that could be used? So, no, I am talking about Adobe Experience Manager, which is a single brand, but the issue, Steve, is that there are two products here. So, um, the, the, uh, 
so in an ideal world, you would just have a single OCP, a single platform with a single interface, a single set of permissions, a single information model, a single set of connectors, uh, quite frankly, a single roadmap, all the things that you kind of don't have when, when this, these capabilities are striped across two products. To be sure, those products are integrated, but it's not the same as having kind of a unified environment. And the goal of any enterprise foundation services in that stack that I laid out is that it's unified, right? You've got a unified customer data platform for your unified customer data. You've got a unified set of customer journeys and decisioning that you're doing in your journey orchestration, right? And so ideally you've got a unified content platform where you have a single environment with all the rules and tracking and capabilities all in a single place. And that's probably our biggest knock against Adobe. Uh, Satya is asking, get a copy of the deck. And I think Satya, you asked about the video and you will get both via email in the next 48 hours or so. Um, great. So Jelaine is asking about Microsoft and Salesforce, I've heard they're kind of in this now too. Well, yes and no. So first let's just dispatch with Microsoft because Microsoft really has not had much of a web content management or digital asset management strategy for some time now. Nominally, you can use SharePoint for intranet content management, but they don't really have a story in terms of customer facing. They do have Microsoft Dynamics, CRM, and marketing, which has some lightweight content management built into it just for the purposes of those channels. Microsoft really doesn't have an omni-channel story here. Now, Salesforce is a little bit different because they've gone to market just in the past few days saying that they do have a story. But Salesforce has uh, beefed up the content management subsystem that was in their communities platform and now calls it an omni-channel content management system. It is not an omni-channel content management system, but it, it is does have aspirations in that regard. I think Salesforce is underestimating the level of effort that it's going to take for it to actually become a pro forma OCP, but we'll certainly keep watching. And at such time that it does, if it does become a plausible solution, we'll certainly add it to our map and we'll evaluate it head to head against those same business scenarios that we evaluate everything else. How are CCM players expanding into the OCP space? So by CCM, we mean um, component content management, which is historically what you used for things like help desk or documentation or things that you needed to translate. These are XML-based component content management systems, usually for tracking you know, real source of the truth content that you were gonna reuse as opposed to derive per se. And so they didn't see those used a lot in marketing environments or CX environments, tended to be used more for knowledge bases and other forms of enterprise content. So nominally, because they support component content management and they're highly structured, they could play a role here. The problem is that they typically don't have really good first-class support for data and especially not for, for assets. Uh, by that, I mean image and video and that sort of thing. So they're, they're, they're really quite truncated functionally in that regard. Um, so Anella is asking, in an organization, who decides which platform to go with, i.e. WCM versus DAM versus PIM? That's a great question. You're getting to governance. Ideally, there's some sort of stack owner who we call Stacy the stack owner, if you remember. And ideally, Stacy is empowered to work with her team to figure out what are the gaps and where should they fill those gaps with something productized and where maybe should they ask a system to do double duty. And so we work with Stacy quite a bit to answer these sorts of questions. If I have a PIM, do I still need a DAM? If I have a WCM, do I still need a DAM? Probably yes in both cases, but maybe not. It depends on your particular circumstances and your particular environment. So it's really, it's something that requires a good, honest assessment of your stack and then some analysis, you know, potentially by a disinterested outsider and, and not a vendor themselves. Great. So with that, we've come up to the end of our half hour. Wanna thank everyone for participating. Feel free to go to that website URL you see at the bottom there, realstorygroup.com slash try to download a sample of this and our other research. And then feel free to reach out to Scott if you have any questions. Otherwise, on behalf of Scott, Gil Scott Dill, this is Tony Byrne from Real Story Group, thanking you again for participating. 
see you next time. Bye now.